<clears throat> what's up tribe how you guys doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button and i hope you like this video this is gonna be your review of fight night season one episode one um it's like a mini series so i don't even know if we're gonna call it season one it's just gonna be a mini series now fight night is based on real events it's on peacock so if you have peak if you don't have peacock you, i don't know what to tell you um they get you a fire stick okay but um it is based on true events, based on a true story. But, of course, it's Hollywood. So, you know, they're going to switch some stuff up and change some things around. But Kevin Hart plays the main character by the name of Chicken. The guy who threw this party's name in real life really was Chicken. I mean, that was like his street name really was Chicken. Now, Chicken is a street dealer, right? He's a numbers runner. We see him, and it takes place in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, this surrounds, like, the whole Black Mafia in the, like, 1970s. Listen, contrary to popular belief, there were more players out here than just Nicky Barnes and Frank Lucas, okay? It was a whole lot more, okay? And um, there was actually this guy by the name of Frank Matthews who they say Frank Matthews was running, he was controlling, like, half the United States, half of the trade and half in the United States, yeah. He actually was indicted, and baby, he disappeared while he was out on bond and never to be found again. Now, word on the curb is that he was living a good life down in North Carolina under the radar, and ain't nobody snitched, nobody turned him in. But literally, that was in the 1970s. Child, do we even know if he's still alive at this point? But that is what they had said. Now, rumor is that Chicken also died at the end of this um, ordeal, but again, Chicken was still alive, again, living his life down in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, down in Georgia. So this, this, this takes place in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, what I like about this is, one, it's based on a true story. Even though, like I said, there's some Hollywood stuff to it. Y'all can find plenty of videos on um, on TikTok, I mean, on, on um, YouTube that can give you, like, the whole breakdown of the real story or whatever. Um but there's also, like, a historical backdrop to this. I don't want to go too deep into that, but there is one. Again, y'all can go because, you know, then y'all stop being a history nerd and all of that. But there's, like, a real, like, historical backdrop to this whole situation. But we see Muhammad Ali. Now, Muhammad Ali um, was stripped of his title um, because he refused to go and enter the draft. He tried to use religious reasons. The U.S. government said no. And if he refused to go, they were going to take his title, which they did. So this is three years later. Um, a senator from Atlanta, Georgia, wants to basically have a fight there because he wants the publicity around giving, giving Muhammad Ali this shot to box again. So this whole story surrounds fight night of Muhammad Ali and his big comeback match um, that he's fighting. So we have, like, Don Cheadle, who plays uh, Atlanta Cop, who actually plays the first Atlanta Cop. I don't know if the first Atlanta Cop's real name is, um, I wrote his name down, um, Hudson, but it's, but there had to be a first. So he's playing the first guy, and he's... Not really torn. Like, he doesn't agree with Muhammad Ali not serving. He said, listen, when they called my name, I served. I did what I had to do. Um, but he is put in charge of security for Muhammad Ali. Because, of course, the black cop, were going, you know, is going to, you know, protect the black man. Um, not realizing that we're not a monolith. Like, Don Cheadle did, or he did not agree with uh, Muhammad Ali not not um, boxing. And nobody really wanted to protect Muhammad Ali because they were like, they didn't agree. They thought it was unpatriotic. And of course, now he had changed his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali, became a, a Muslim. A, you know, he was a member of the Nation of Islam at first. And so it was a lot of politics around that. And nobody really wanted to, like, nobody wanted to protect Muhammad Ali, right? So... There we have that, right? So we've got that going on with Don Cheadle and his situation with Muhammad Ali. Then we have Chicken, who's played by Kevin Hart, um, who wants to be a big-time player, right? He um, he used to run drugs back in the day, but he made a promise that he was going to stop. So now he runs numbers, but he's looking for a lick. Like, he's trying to get in the game. And Taraji P. Henson plays his, I guess, business partner, sometimes side chick, because... Chicken is married with, like, four kids. And his wife is, like, holy roller, holy roller, right? 
Um, but the reason why I say sometimes side chick is because she not only does she know he's married, but she also saw him flirting like with a whole nother woman. So like, I feel like she just knows her role. Like she the business partner. And when, you know, sometimes she let him hit it. I, I, I don't know. That's the best thing I can say about that. Right. So when this, the, this particular episode opens up, we see that he finds out that one of his homies, uh, Silky, Slim, I, you know, uh, he reminds me of Big Worm from, um, from, um, Friday, right? Because, of course, he's, you know, it's the 1970s, so he's got the whole wig situation or whatever. We find out that he's running with Frank Morrow. Now, in the, mo- in the TV show slash movie, his name is Frank Morrow. Find out he's running with Frank Morrow, and, of course, they like, how he get down with Frank Morrow? Like, how is he, um, running with this dude? Well, they meet up with him down to the Gentleman's Club, and they find out that um, they are wanting to throw a party after the big Muhammad Ali fight. Everybody's coming in town for the Muhammad Ali fight, and they're wanting to throw a party. Well, the guy that promised that he could make the party happen, it sort of fell through. So Kevin Hart jumps in, and he's like, yo, I got this. Like... He trying to have a party for y'all down at the Biltmore. You don't want, like, the white folk don't want y'all down there. Like, y'all want a good old down-home party where you can let your head down, you can dance, you can drink, you can smoke, you could, you know, have all the things and do all the things without being under a scrutiny, right? He said, I have the perfect place. Let me do this party for you. So he agrees, they agree to let him do the party. He said, I'll pay for it out of my own pocket. Just let me keep 5% of the door, right? So he said it's going to be like Black Vegas fight night, right? The after party. So he says, well, I'm going to talk to my people. I'm going to run it up the flag. You know, I'm run it up to the, let my people know, and I'll let you know what it is. So he calls Chicken back um, and says, look, they're going to let you do it, and I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to tell you this one time and one time only, so you better write it down because I ain't repeating myself. So he basically lets him know who all... Frank wants him to invite. He said, you got to call these people and you got to invite them yourself. And he's describing all the different characters from New Jersey to St. Louis to Detroit, you know, all the different players all over the country. You know, he said, this who you, he said, but you need to call them and you need to invite them yourself. Um, so of course now he's getting everything in place. So it looks like he has two houses, right? It looks like he has the house that he runs his numbers business out of. And then he has the house that he lives with his wife and kids, right? The respectable family man house. And then, and what we, what's going on is the numbers business is not making as much money as it once did. And he does not want to go back into drugs. Although, I don't know what he thought he was going to get into by trying to get in business with Frank. But, what can I tell you? So, he's putting the things in place for the for the party. You know, he's moving all this, the, the, the things around. And what we find out is that the guy who originally was trying to throw the party that ended up falling through, he was actually up to something. And we see him make a phone call and be like, yo, you know, it fell through, but it might work out in our favor because Chicken, this little, you know, this little dude named Chicken, he's going to do the party and he might actually end up being the perfect pansy to take the fall for the whole situation. So he said, it actually might work out better for us because then we don't have nothing to do with it. Now, as they're getting ready for the party, we do see a couple of shysty dudes hanging around, you know, like, oh, we're bringing paint in because, of course, he's getting everything together, bringing in poker tables and roulette wheels, you know, all the stuff that they're doing, right? Getting all the girls, you know, all the best girls, you know, all the things that you got to do for this kind of party and you're trying to impress somebody. So Frank gets in town and they pick him up, child. Why he used the limo from his friend's funeral home business, child? He covers up the name of the business. But anyway, he uses his friend's car. And he was going to get his friend to chauffeur Frank around. And his boy Slim was like, no, 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 no. You're going to be driving for Frank. Like, I, we're not trusting this to nobody else. So you drive Frank. So when they get in the car, he's like, you know, to the Hilton. He was like, we got to make a stop first. And then we're going to go to the Hilton. So the stop that they had to make first was by some dude house that I guess was stealing from Frank. And when the when the two dudes got back in the car, Terrence Howard's character, and I guess the bodyguard, when he get back in the car, he says, I guess you can't steal if you ain't got no fingers. Now, mind you, they done heard this man screaming and hollering and everything else. 
Frank was sitting in the back of the car like he ain't hear nothing, he ain't know nothing, he ain't see nothing. And Frank is played by Sam Jackson. Samuel Jackson. Um, and so he was like, he goes back to Taraji Henson and tells her what happened. And she was like, so now you an accessory to murder. Like you don't want to be a drug dealer, but you an accessory to, you know? And he said, well, not really. He said, you know, it was a test. They trying to see if I'm loyal. I didn't flinch. I didn't say nothing. You know, it was a test. It was a test. He was like, and I passed the test. And she was, you know, basically side on him. Like, yeah, I ain't passed the test. Now, while that is going on with him trying to pass the test, did he get kidnapped by um, a Cuban dude from Florida saying, basically, how dare you have this party in my backyard and you don't even, you know, like, you don't even give me enough respect to let me know we having this party. And, you know, Kevin Hart with Chicken was like, Dude, you from Miami, like, that's not even near Atlanta. That's not our, we not neighbors. And he was like, I'll tell you what, I'll forgive you, but I want 50% of what you make off of this party. And, of course, Kevin Hart was like, I'm not making nothing. Like, I'm putting up my own money, and I'm getting to keep, you know, he didn't tell him all this, but, like, I, I what are you talking about? So, Kevin Hart goes to Terrence Howard and his boy Slim, like, Frank got to help me out of this. Like, Frank, and they, they was like, Frank don't even know who you are. Frank doesn't know who you are. Now, the other thing I have to tell you is that Chicken, a.k.a. Kevin Hart, he has an aversion to guns. He's like, I don't deal with them. I don't want them around me. So he definitely told him this was a party where nobody could have any weapons, right? I'm sure that's going to come back and bite him in the butt, but he said he just he just got a thing about him. So he's telling them, listen, y'all got to help me out of this. Like, he's trying to make me pay money I'm not even making. Like, what is going on? He trying, he's shaking me down. So they basically were like, look, that is a you problem. Like, Frank don't even know who you are, bro. So while they're talking in the, lo they're in the lobby of the hotel, Lola Falana walks by. And Terrence Howard's character was like, oh, she looked just like Lola Falani, Falana. He was like, that is Lola Falana. And he was like, oh, Frank loves her. Like, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. So Chicken was like, so if I could get, her to say hi to Frank. You think Frank could help me out with my problem? And they were like, if you could get her to say hi to Frank, Frank might even know who you are. You know, he might even know your name at this point. So, Chicken, she's looking for a particular brand of cigarettes that they don't have at the hotel. Because remember, this is the 70s. People could smoke wherever they wanted to smoke. They sold cigarettes everywhere, you know. So he goes and gets the brand of cigarettes, knocks on her door. How he knew what her room number was, child, who knows? Child, it's the 70s, I guess. I don't know. He knocks on her door, and he talks to her. You know, he takes her to cigarettes, tell her, hey, like, that's who I am. You know, I'm the kind. She was like, you work for the hotel? He was like, no, nah, I don't work for the hotel, but I'm the kind of person. You know, this is the kind of stuff that I do. You know, I look out for people. So he basically convinced her to say hi to his boss. You know, he had to sweet talk her. And she comes down to say to talk to Frank. She 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 agrees to do it and she stays to her word. So of course, he agrees to get rid of Chicken's problem. So the night of the fight, they go and talk to the gangster from Miami. Now, he backs down cuz he was like cuz he was like, "Did you know that this was my party? Like this that party was in honor of me. So this is he worked for me." So if you shaking him down, that's basically you shaking me down. And I know you don't want nobody, I know you don't want me to think that you shaking me down, right? So he was like, nah, nah, nah. He backed down. But then he said, the next time you in my town, though, you could at least reach out to me as a courtesy. Now, you could tell that Frank wasn't feeling that. But I guess he said, we ain't about to settle it right here at this good establishment right before this fight about to go down. He said, why don't you come to the party tonight? So I feel like he's going to have plans for Mr. Puerto Rico. That's what, that's what, Puerto Rico, Mr. Cuba, I don't know. I ain't trying to be ignorant, but they called him Puerto Rican. They called him Cuban child, whichever one. I feel like they had plans for him later on at the party. So while all of this is going on, we sort of leave off with the fight is starting and everybody's at the venue. The party is going strong. Everything is going right at the party. You know, everybody's there gambling, blah, 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 blah. Um, now, 
But what we do see is Don Cheadle's character, Detective Hudson, does know Chicken, and they make eye contact, and Chicken is like, Ugh. you know, like, damn, of all the people that can see me, that's who gonna see me here. And Don Cheadle looking at him like, this, you know. So there's clearly a history there. Now, while this is going on, we have the other story happening with Detective Hudson and Muhammad Ali. Now, Muhammad Ali is being who Muhammad Ali is, right? He is loud and boisterous and wants to be seen and is doing the things. He went to Morehouse College. He did all of these things. Um, and Don Cheadle was like, listen, if he's going to keep being out here in the public and being so so visible, like, I can't promise I can protect him. If I'm going to do this, y'all got to let me do it my way. And what ends up happening is he ends up taking him to, like, a lake house out, you know, probably on Lake Lanier, out somewhere away on the outskirts of the city to try to protect him. And just, and, and they have this very contentious thing because Don Cheadle called him Mr. Clay. And he was like, bruh, my daddy is Mr. Clay. You call me Ali. Like, you're going to call me by my name. You're going to respect me. And then, you know, Muhammad Ali made some comments at Don Cheadle. And, Mah and Don Cheadle was like, and it's Detective Hudson. Like, you're going to respect me. Like, you want me to respect you, you know. So they sort of had, you know, they were sort of clashing. But then it seemed like they were sort of building something. I ain't said a friendship, but they were building something. And then one night some, you know, Klansmen came through waving their Confederate flag, blowing the horns or whatever. And... Detective was really smart because he did not allow them to shoot the white boys because he had black officers with him as well as white officers. He said, listen, basically just hold your position. If they shoot, then shoot back. But don't you don't shoot first. And what ended up happening was they did have eggs and they threw eggs and one of them black cops was getting ready to shoot one of them boys. But Hudson was able to able to stop him from doing that. Um, and Muhammad Ali was angry. He was like, why did you do that? Like, why did you stop? Why you had a shot? Why didn't you shoot them? And he was like, uh, because that wouldn't have ended well for either one of us. Like they didn't have weapons. They had eggs and had they thrown an egg at me and I had killed one of them that you already know how that story is. But of course, Muhammad Ali's attitude was, I don't give a damn. Like lay them out. It, it'd have been, you know, four less, you know, out there. Um, but basically, he stood his ground and told him, listen, like, that would have been unfortunate. Like, that wouldn't have worked out. That, that wouldn't have ended well for either one of us. But the night of the fight, when it came time to figure out who was going to, who they were going to listen to to protect him, he said, hey, we listening to Hudson. Whatever he says, that's what we going to do. And that's how he got to the ring by letting the detective protect him. So, again, friends, I think that's a stretch right now. But definitely a level of respect there, right? So we, the episode, the first episode ends with two masked dudes with a gun in their hand knocking on the door to the party. That's where it begins. Now before I, um, I just want to say a couple of other things. Again, definitely go down to the YouTube and catch some, I'm going I'm to find the channel I was looking at earlier that broke down this, um, that, that broke down a lot of this. If you guys watch Uptown Saturday Night, which is actually one of my favorite movies um, with Bill Cosby and Sidney Poitier, there's a scene in there where they get robbed at, at uh, Madame Zenobia's and everybody had to take all of their clothes off. They got that from this actual robbery. The robbers actually made them take their clothes off. Like, they actually did that. So, that, so like I said, there's a lot of things that come out of this Frank Matthews um the actual gangster Frank Matthews, he used to make his um, workers but be butt naked while they were cutting up the product and bagging it. We saw that in New Jack City. We know other drug dealers did that as well. So anyway, go watch, go catch some of, like, if you've already watched it, go watch some of the other stuff that's on YouTube to hear the diff, like what's real and what was fake. Um, but so far, so good. Um, it's so it's four episodes already on Peacock. I don't know if it's four episodes all together or um, if there are more episodes that's going to drop. But so far, there are four episodes. So go over to Peacock and check it out. Let me know what you guys think. Talk to y'all later. Peace.